How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic nine, redox processes, volume number one. What is oxidation and reduction? Let's go. So volume one, what is oxidation and reduction? We look at the saying oil rig, we talk about oxidation numbers, and then we discuss murderers. What's that? Hang around, find out. IB understandings, applications and skills focus around using oxidation numbers and being able to identify oxidizing and reducing agents. We use the idea of oxidation numbers to write names of transition metals and to identify oxidized and reduced species. So the word oxidation was first derived from reactions where oxygen was added to a chemical species. So if oxygen has, or a chemical species has gained oxygen, it has been oxidized. In reverse, if a species has lost oxygen, it's said to have been reduced. Reduction, oxidation, the word comes together, redox. So in this particular example, we have copper oxide reacting with carbon to produce copper and carbon dioxide. You can see quite quickly that the copper oxide has been turned into copper, so it's lost its oxygen. The carbon, well, it's gained an oxygen to form carbon dioxide. So the carbon gaining an oxygen, we say is oxidized or undergoes oxidation, and the copper oxide has lost its oxygen, so it has been reduced or has undergone reduction. Another way to identify a redox reaction is by the loss or gain of hydrogen. Now if hydrogen is lost from a chemical species, that species has undergone oxidation. So in this reaction we've got hydrogen sulfide and chlorine gas, and the hydrogen sulfide has lost its hydrogen to form elemental sulfur, so that means it's undergone oxidation. The chlorine gas, well, it's gone from chlorine to hydrogen chloride, so it's gained a hydrogen, which means it would have undergone reduction. So we can sum that up, oxidation and reduction, in terms of oxygen and hydrogen by this little table. Oxidation is the gain of oxygen or the loss of hydrogen. Reduction is the loss of oxygen or the gain of hydrogen. Now that is one way that we can identify an oxidation or reduction reaction. However, in many cases they're not as simple as that and in some cases we don't even involve oxygen. So we need another definition for what a redox reaction is. A redox reaction is essentially an electron transfer reaction, where electrons are transferred from one species to the other. And by species, I mean chemical and the state. So oxidation can be described as the loss of electrons. So a species is losing electrons, the electrons would be on the products or the right-hand side of a half equation. In reduction, we have a gain of electrons, and that means the electrons would be on the reactant side, it's gaining electrons. Now in any reaction, the number of electrons lost in oxidation must be the same as the number of electrons gained in reduction. We can't overall have a net loss or gain of electrons, they have to be balanced. Now we have a little saying that can help you remember about loss of electrons and gain of electrons. It's called oil rig. Oil stands for oxidation is loss, loss of electrons. When we use this saying, we're only talking about electrons. So oxidation, oil, oxidation is the loss of electrons. Rig, reduction is gain, gain of electrons. So oil, rig, oxidation is lost, reduction is gain, and we're strictly talking about electrons. So the oxidation state, or the oxidation number, gives an indication of the degree of oxidation of an atom. The oxidation state is essentially a charge that the atom would have if all of the bonds were considered ionic in nature, that is, they all either give or receive an electron. To assign oxidation states in a molecular compound, we follow some very specific rules, and these rules will help us identify if something has undergone oxidation or reduction. The first rule is the sum of the oxidation numbers must equal the charge on the species. So if it's neutral, they must all add up to zero. The oxidation state of an element, something from the periodic table, is zero. The oxidation state of fluorine is always minus one. The oxidation state of oxygen is always minus two, except in a peroxide, and we'll get to that. And hydrogen is always plus one, unless it's a metal hydride where it's minus one, and we'll cover that as well.
Now the IB wants you to be very specific with the way that you write the oxidation number. You must write the sign first and then the number second. So the first one, I2. I2 is an element straight from the periodic table so it has an oxidation number of zero. BaCl2, well we know that barium is in the second group of the periodic table and chlorine is in group 17. If they're all ionic, chlorine will be minus one, but there's two of them. So that gives a total charge from the chlorines of minus two, so the barium must carry the rest of the positive charge to be plus two. SNO2, oxygen is always two minus, except when it's a peroxide, here it's not a peroxide. So we have oxygen is minus two and there's two of them, so that's a total of minus four charge. So the tin must carry all of the positive charge and it must be plus four. Be careful, you wouldn't want to write oxygen as minus four, that's the total charge, its oxidation state is minus two. So in P2O5, again we have oxygen which is minus two, but we have five of them, so that's minus 10. We have two phosphorus to carry the charge, so we must have plus five for each phosphorus. For the magnesium hydroxide, we need to think OH has always a minus charge, but there's two of them here. So oxygen is minus two, hydrogen plus one, and then the magnesium must balance that out to be plus two. H6TO6, we start with the rules. What do we know? Oxygen, oxygen is always minus two, hydrogen is plus one. So we have minus 12 coming from all of the hydrogens and plus six coming from the the hydrogen, so that leaves the Te to have plus six. For the dichromate ion, we have an overall charge for this one. So I need to balance to keep some of that charge in play. So oxygen would be two minus, and the chromium would be plus six, not plus seven, because it needs to carry that two minus charge. For Cn minus, we have minus three for the nitrogen, and that means the carbon must be plus two. MgH2, magnesium hydride. When we have a magnesium and a hydrogen, a metal and a hydrogen, it has the oxidation number of minus one. For H2O2, that's hydrogen peroxide. Now the reason I know that this is a peroxide is because hydrogen is always plus one, which means the two oxygens would have to carry a minus two charge. So they must be one minus each. For barium peroxide, barium is always two plus, which means the O2 must be two minus in total, which shows that it is a peroxide as well. When we're naming transition metals, we need to make sure that we include the oxidation state. So whenever it's a transition metal, you must have Roman numerals to represent the oxidation number of the metal iron. So for the first one, oxygen is always minus two. We have iron, which must be plus two. So this would be known as iron two oxide. We use Roman numerals to represent the charge. For the second one, again, oxygen is minus two, but in this case, iron would be plus three. So that would be called iron three oxide. For the next one, the vanadium, when we work out the oxidation numbers, vanadium is five. So we have vanadium five oxide. And for the last one, the manganese, we have two of the oxygens. Now it's not a peroxide because any transition metal will not form a peroxide. So the manganese must be plus four. So we have manganese four oxide. The reason for this is these transition metals can form multiple oxidation states. Okay, so how can we use these? We've done a little bit of work on them, but how can we use them? So oxidation numbers are good to see when there's a change. If there's been a change in oxidation number, that represents that a redox reaction has taken place. Oxidation involves an increase in oxidation number. So the numbers become more positive. Reduction involves a decrease in oxidation number. If I go back to oxidation, if we go from minus one to one, that's a more positive value, so that represents oxidation. For reduction, that involves a decrease in oxidation number, or the numbers get less positive. So from minus one to minus three, that would represent a decrease in oxidation number, which would mean that it is reduction. So here's some examples, using oxidation numbers to state the species that has undergone oxidation and reduction. So we go through and we do oxidation numbers for each of the elements. 
Any number at the front, the stoichiometric ratios, they don't play any part in the number for the oxidation number. So by assigning oxidation numbers, what can we see? We can see that oxygen has gone from minus two to zero. Remember, oxygen as an element is a zero oxidation state. So the water has undergone oxidation to form oxygen. The fluorine, well, it's gone from zero element, elemental fluorine to minus one. So the fluorine must have undergone reduction. It's got a more negative oxidation number. So water has undergone oxidation and fluorine has undergone reduction. Mercury oxide can be decomposed into mercury and oxygen. So we can see here the mercury has gone from a plus two oxidation state to a zero oxidation state. So that's undergone reduction. The oxygen in the mercury oxide has gone from minus two to zero, so it's undergone oxidation. So here we have the mercury oxide, one of them is acting in reduction and the other is acting in oxidation. For the final one, going through and putting in the oxidation numbers, when we have charges on the ions, we can simply just write in the oxidation state. So the magnesium has gone from zero to two plus, it's got more positive, that represents oxidation. The lead has gone from two plus to zero, so that represents reduction. So lead two plus has undergone reduction, magnesium has undergone oxidation. The species that always undergoes oxidation or reduction will always be on the reactant side. So our reactants is what undergoes oxidation or reduction. Okay, so what is an oxidant and reductant? So this is where things can get a little bit challenging. An oxidant or oxidizing agent is a species that causes another to be oxidized. A reductant or reducing agent is a species that causes another to be reduced. Okay, think about it this way. If you're murdered, you can't be the murderer. What does that mean? Well, if you are oxidized or undergo oxidation, you must be the reductant. You're not the oxidant. It doesn't work like that. So if you're murdered, you can't be the murderer. So if you undergo oxidation, you are the reductant. If you undergo reduction or you're reduced, you must be the oxidant. If you're murdered, you can't be the murderer. So if you undergo reduction, you can't be the reductant. You must be the opposite one. So if you undergo reduction, you must be the oxidant. So identify the oxidant and reductant in the following reaction. So we start off by using our oxidation numbers and we can see that calcium goes from zero to plus two and oxygen goes from zero to minus two. So that means that the calcium has undergone oxidation. The oxygen, that's undergone reduction. So if the calcium is undergoing oxidation, that means it must be the reductant. So calcium would be the reductant in this equation. Now I'm writing the state there as well because it will ask you to identify the species. Oxygen, O2, that has undergone reduction, so that would be the oxidant. Oxidant. Oxygen is usually a very good oxidant. That's a little bit of a tip. If we're asked to write the half equations, what we need to do is we need to take the species that's involved in oxidation. So we've got calcium solid and it turns into calcium two plus ions, which in this case would be in a solid. Now, how do we balance that up? Well, we've got a two plus charge on the left, on the right, sorry, I'll do the other one first. We've got oxygen gas turning into O2 minus ions. Those aren't balanced and we'll look at balancing those up by using electrons. So here we have a charge of plus two on the right hand side and zero on the left hand side. Now we add electrons to the more positive side. So I add two electrons to the right hand side and that is my oxidation half reaction. For the oxygen half equation, I need to balance my oxygens first. So I need to put a two out the front of the O2 minus. So that means I've got two things that are negatively two charged, which gives me an overall charge of minus four. So I need to balance for that charge by adding four electrons to the left-hand side. I add electrons to the more positive side of the equation, which gives me my reduction reaction. So half equations, which we just wrote, show either the oxidation or the reduction reaction. A half equation also includes electrons that are either reactants, if it's reduction, or products, if it's oxidation. 
So here we have two equations. The first one we've got magnesium plus oxygen turning into magnesium oxide. The first thing we do before we write half equations is go through and do the oxidation numbers. So magnesium and oxygen are both elements, they're both zero, and magnesium will be two plus and oxygen will be two minus in the ionic compound. So that means magnesium has undergone oxidation and oxygen has undergone reduction. So to balance the magnesium equation, we have magnesium turning into magnesium 2 plus and then plus two electrons to balance for that charge and make it neutral. So that's the oxidation reaction. The oxygen gas has turned into O2 minus ions in that solid. So again, I've got to balance for the oxygen by putting a two out the front. That leaves me with a charge of four minus on the right hand side. So I've got to balance by adding four electrons to the left hand side. So there is my oxidation and reduction reactions. Notice that the four electrons and the two electrons don't exactly balance each other out. So when we wrote the overall equation, we would have to double the magnesium reaction and that would put the two out the front of the magnesium, which is where the stoichiometric coefficient comes from. But when we do oxidation numbers, we don't consider those stoichiometric coefficients. Okay, the next example, sodium and chlorine, both elements, so both zero oxidation states, turning into sodium ion chloride ion. So Na has gone from zero to plus one, so it's undergone oxidation, so we add one electron to the right hand side. Chlorine gas has gone from Cl2 to Cl minus, so I've got a balance for the chlorines here, so I put a two out the front, and then I've got a balance for the charge by adding two electrons to the left hand side. So I've therefore written the oxidation, which is sodium, and the reduction, which is chlorine. Okay, volume one, some top tips. Oil rig, remember the same. Also, if you're murdered, you can't be the murderer, and apply that to oxidants and reductants. And if they ask you for the species, that means the state as well. Don't forget to write it. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you.